maybe you can pull it up. It's um just on my uh on Facebook. Friends with um Logan. What's that? Right. Are you friends with Logan on yeah. Facebook? Yeah. Just pull up his picture. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I still have a few more announcements, but I wanted to get Bingo started, so you can start reading your Bingos. Um. We had the 4th of July um, this past week, as you guys know. And Mike Bob Provo wrote in the parade. And we had a costume contest for such an event. And I would like to announce our winners. Da -da 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 -da. Oh. Okay, that was pretty cool. So Cosmo happened to be in the entry behind us, and he was on a geek bike, and he kept riding with our group, and it was so great. So we have the endorsement of Cosmo. He really won the costume contest, but Logan and his sister. My sister is Peach, my brother-in-law is Mario, and then Baby is my wife. Isn't that great? So round of applause for Logan and Q. We're ready to end your question. And Logan, we have a prize for you. Jacob, you have a prize for Logan. You have to break it out? Yes, you do. We talked about Oh, yeah, you get um, any shirt you want from the store that they'll be able to get. Oh, yeah, it's So this yeah. announcement number two. Yeah. What a great lead in. We have Mike Bob Provo store opening this week. Oh. And you can order t shirts in multiple colors, stickers, different types of Billy shirts. And maybe down the road, I'll do 20 is plenty signed at a discount. Yeah. Okay. So a Mike Bob Provo store opening. Through our website, yeah. 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 I'll set it when we do it in the middle. And Logan gets the first store credit. Okay. To choose them. Yes, you look at the All right. Um, yeah. Billy. Billy. Gender neutral. Whatever you want. Okay. The so last announcement I have. No, two more. Um, is that we are doing running a bike ballet at the Provo's Farmers Market. Provo Farmers Market. I matched the sign on purpose. On purpose, totally, one hundred percent purpose. And so, if you would like to volunteer, volunteer, Jacob, why don't you tell the people? Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get a bingo. <laughs> I'm saying like all the first. Would you be quiet? Yeah, we have had. Quite a success at the farmer's market. We probably get between 50 to 60 bikes or more. And it seems like we get more every week. Um, we can't do it alone, though. Pregnant pause, do you guys like that? Um, yeah, so basically, if you guys are willing to sign up to uh, to volunteer during it or help with setup or take down, I'm currently um, writing a PDF on how to do that so you feel more confident driving somebody else's truck. Whether it's a stick shift or just manning the booth, yeah, or because it is quite difficult. Like usually, um, it's not just tabling, right? It's the combination of people, you know, relying on us to watch their eight thousand dollar bikes. So to put pressure on you, it's quite fun. I would do it every week if I had to stand, but I don't. So that's it. So volunteer. Is that service? I would say so. A good opportunity for service. A great service. Did you really get all those? <laughs> no way. Do we have a nice sandwich? Hey, Harvey. No. Harvey, what road did we ride on the ticket to this meeting today? Oh. 200 East. Oh, what a good road. Okay. Um, my Our next last announcement, second to last, um, we had a council, we had a bike ride and a walk for council, city council candidates. And we just want to say thanks to those that attended and that we have an open invite to council candidates to walk and ride with us. We have other like um, official walks and rides coming up that you can participate in. And we also plan to host a debate. So keep your council candidates, uh, you know, keep them informed that this is an option for them and help them know what we care about. Perfect. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> you said volunteer city council three days pro though and e bike. Okay, you don't get a win. What? <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so wait, what do people get if they get a blackout? Who's the first? If oh, somebody gets a blackout. So we have some prizes here from the Utah County Health Department. The grand prize is a bike. Oh, Whoa, let's go. That's Barbie. Eight, eight to 14. You are a We have some flat bracelets. So, Jane, you can have one for being the first thing. And we also have. Okay, we have reflective strips. Actually, you could put that instead. Reflective strips. Wait, what's the grand prize? No, this is, if you get a blackout, you get this shirt. Oh, wait, okay, hold on. Everyone has the same words on their card, so everyone would get that. Nobody gets it. And then we have mini planters that I've heard, we don't have plants for, but you can put your own plant in there. They're really cute. Because. <laughs> because <laughs> plants in your house are good health. health. What? No, they're oh, they're like they look they're like uh. You said it. I said they're really bad at We brought the styrofoam. Okay, let's keep going. We're gonna run out of time because I keep talking. Okay, and then the last announcement is that there's a station area plan survey that we will be sending out a link to. And that is how much of that announcement I'll do because we want to hear from Tegan. Tegan is our director of students and she is going to present on some advocacy efforts that kind of brought her to Bike Walk Pro Bowl, if I'm remembering right. Or, the, or at least were influenced by her involvement here. Yeah. Okay. So come on, come on. Okay. Yeah, we'll be sending out the link and posting on Instagram. So thank you, Chris. We will. Thank you. Okay, so um basically the deal with this project that I'm presenting on, um, what happened was Christine was out of town and she couldn't go to the meeting with Provo Engineering. And so Aaron invited me. And at the end, they asked if there were any projects that were on our minds. And so I brought up this um, intersection because I'm a student at BYU. And this is an intersection that I bike to or I bike through to get to campus. Um, and so this is 700 East going north, 900 North going west, or no, east. And then campus drive and so I will go up 700 east and then turn left on the campus drive, but. Um, what we found was that or what I found in my commute was that going up this hill and turning left was really hard and it made it so my speed wasn't fast enough going into campus drive and I felt really unsafe going against the people going down 900 north um, and making that little loop. Um, and so it was really nice because um, Vern and Kayvon from. Um, Global Engineering um, met with us later on on site and we got to talk about exactly what me and Aaron were thinking would be a good solution to this. Um, and so we made some suggestions, which you'll see on this mock-up, um, about maybe putting a bike lane on the right side going north and then doing some paint to make this dead space um, that is usually a space between the lane and the bus lane four bikes so they can go up and turn left up there or when they're coming down from 900 north they can use that space as a bike lane and then going up 700 east they can use this space as a bike lane to turn in to campus drive um and then we also brought up a suggestion about making 900 north a bus and bike shared lane um, because there's a lot of development going on on 900 East where they're redeveloping a lot of old apartments. And so there's gonna be an influx of student transportation going down to 900 North in the coming years. Um, and there are no bike lanes in that short segment between 700 East and 900 East on 900 North. I know it's a lot of orientations, just imagine it in your mind. <laughs> um, and it was really awesome because 
we had the opportunity to kind of um, give good suggestions and Vern and Kinghorn were very receptive to it. Um, and they said that they were going to consider these ideas and see what was possible with the flow of traffic um, because this area has been improved a lot since um, the bus was put in and in the past it used to be like a stop sign and it was kind of a mess. Um, so the flow is a lot better than it used to be, but it still could be improved, especially for bikes. Um, and so we are just still working with them on that and they're seeing what's possible um, and what with what we suggested. Um, so yeah, I would just um, encourage you guys to think of ways and kind of ways that you're inconvenienced by infrastructure not being good for biking or walking in your area. If there's an apartment complex or a shopping development or something like that that doesn't have a bike rack, please bring it up. It's really helpful to know because we all live in different areas and go to different places for work and for recreation. So it's good to know from a variety of perspectives, areas that can be improved. Um, and Provo Engineering is really good at hearing our concerns and we can bring them up in meetings like this too. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, do you guys have any questions about this? Um, so the bike bus accommodation uh -huh. bikes, where would that go on this map? So that would be on kind of that light right there on the north. Yeah. That it's not on this map, unfortunately, but it'd be kind of from this light on to 900 east. So okay. that kind of it's basically just like a block, maybe a block and a half. Okay. But yeah, it's it's kind of a good area for that because the traffic is pretty slow. Yeah. Um, and it's just a very small area. So it'd be kind of an interesting um I'll bring up the other picture. It'd be kind of an interesting new way of um, handling that traffic. Well, you mentioned the new development right there, right? Yeah. And then like these two developments actually yeah. any corner from each other. Yeah. What were you saying? Are you were you asking about this? Yeah. Yeah. I I I don't think I'm all thing in this, but this idea was randomly rejected by UTA, but boom! Mary Dillamar Schaefer, who is the regional manager uh, for, for UTA and a uh, great ally, uh, she uh, took it seriously and considered it. Uh, we gave her an example of this happening with an optical fix. We uh, ran it past a bunch of her drivers. And they this did make them very nervous, but probably for Harrison. Um, but uh, I mean, this is this is how things work, right? You don't get everything you ask for. Um, and I think this is a part of the education process, just as like with Vernon and Kaon, they didn't say, oh yes, we'll do everything you request, but they took it seriously, they listened to it, and uh I think we're going to see some some small improvements. I love it. I didn't even know that's a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know it was a day until I went to the detective class fall and I was like, wow, yeah. uh, this, this is okay. And, yeah. and Mary didn't know it was a day, and now they know it's a day, and, and maybe eventually we'll uh, get there someday. It's, it's yeah. And that's a good point. Well, I just, you can't answer for maybe someone in the group to ask for a little bit, but I've been thinking a lot about. The availability of bike parking and our continuing housing brings us away from the neighborhood. Um, somebody to install some bike parking and other cell phones. Just kidding. Um, that's the UDU. Anywhere. And anywhere. So currently, we're trying to do that. We're trying to go around to property management to pitch them on um, bike rack. You have to do the point coming up at 3 a.m. to be able to be excited about it. How many bike racks? 12. 12 thick wall racks. We're doing it for free. And I found that the F word people like. What's <laughs> up? I gotta um, so yeah, it's uh, people like free things, and they're more they're motivated by that. So if, oh. you're, if you come approach somebody and say, "Instead, uh, like construction companies say, instead of a thousand dollars per rack to install, your eyes will glaze over." They don't first see the value of a bike rack, and the money is something certainly an issue. So if we can get more organization among 
you know, I mean, we have a rap crew now, but wouldn't it be cool to coordinate with uh, the student body to maybe, you know, ask their apartment buildings or something to sort of board out? So, I don't know. Honestly, it improved uh, mental health because. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Ragdoll. Yeah, Ragdoll sounds really good because it, I, I would never want to leave my bike somewhere and say, especially with an expensive bike. So, peace of mind. I'm going to take a cable car for like One thing I will say about bike racks, um, kind of a little plug for what the student association has been doing. We're going to form a club at BYU for the fall, which is open to BYU and BYU students. Um, and one of the advocacy projects that we are considering is contacting apartment complexes, like the two big um, management yeah. companies. I can't remember what they're called, um, but trying to get um, bike storage in those places. So that is one of the things that the students are going to be working on in the yeah. fall. Hopefully they like that idea. It's not up to you. We also, an issue we ran into is if you go to some of the apartment complexes, there's a lot of abandoned bikes. So there's really no incentive for a property manager to install racks or new racks because you know students need the bikes. So implementing sort of like a, a program that they could you know go out and say we want to bring your bikes, you know, it will help with us. So, yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, yeah so there's a bike collective or something like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Are there any other questions? Okay, sounds good. I forgot to ask when I finished our announcements if there was any announcements from anybody else. Like, Cam, did you have anything from the city or anything like that? that you I wasn't thinking of they I'm not sure if it's about it. Yeah. I don't know if Aaron has a date at this point, but um so last year, uh Provo City, specifically myself, I applied for two city VG grants. And then luckily about a couple of weeks ago, um I heard the status of the grant application, both of those were approved. So we're going to be using the grant money to make some improvements along um, Oakwood Drive, that's going to be in a new Wasich Elementary School. And then um, there's another application that got approved as well. My second application, that was for Joaquin neighborhoods. So we're going to be making some uh, active transportation improvements along uh, for the Joaquin neighborhood. Thank you. Any? Uh, <laughs> Did anyone else have any announcements from other organizations or Yeah. Well, then we will turn it over to Logan uh, Millsap from Hobble Creek Bicycle Association, although we claimed him as a member of Bike Mark Provo, too. And um, yes, Harrison, go ahead. Sorry, I have actually. Okay, can I give you the microphone? Yes. Sorry, I was going to look at the information. A reminder, July is Clean the Air Month, and UDOT always puts on like a Clean the Air Challenge that you can participate in, um, log your miles and it can, on whatever transportation you use, whether it's for commuting, whether it's just going for a drive, well, not for a drive, but going for a ride, um, all that, and you can sort of see and track as well. You know, July is a really bad air quality month. I and mean, that's something that UDOT is doing. UTA is, of course, encouraging it. Um, also, for any parents in here, we're halfway through the summer, but if you have kids between the age of 12 and 18, uh, you can go to the Provo Station to our customer service and building, and you can purchase a rider's license for $50. That is unlimited bus, train, tracks, and fare between now to, to August 31st. If you have kids that want to take the train up to Lagoon or go to Salt Lake for the day, that's an option if they use the bus regularly. Yeah. Okay, great. And Logan, I'm going to hand it over to you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so um, I, I come up for Bike Walk Provo stuff a lot from Springville, and the connections between Springville and Provo are not super great. So it kind of led me to this discovery. So we're going to start with a lot of you have heard Chris Wilty talk about the Thousand Miles campaign. It was started by Governor Herbert in 2017. 
Um, the goal was to create a thousand miles of new bike trails. Uh, you can see that we've, we've built a lot of them. We still have a ways to go. Uh, but as you've probably heard Chris talk about, a lot of those miles are, you know, recreational focused. They're usually kind of on the outskirts of town. Think things like the, the Spanish Fork River Trail. It's beautiful, but it doesn't connect you to a lot of places. Um, and so that led Governor Cox to create, he wants to create an interstate trail network. Basically, anywhere that you want to go, you should be able to get there on foot or on bike. Um, and Yuda is is in favor of this, and you probably heard uh, Director Carlos Caceres talk about, you know, how we need more trail networks, more transit, how we can't add more lanes to I-15, even though they sometimes still do. Um, and it's not just talk, the legislature passed some bills that will create uh, a dedicated funding source for these new trails. And so we should focus on connecting cities and then connecting through cities. Um, so. Let's see, like I said, um, so this is north is this way, south is that way. This is the Wasatch Front. You have Ogden up here, the Salt Lake Valley, Utah Valley. You can see there's a, a really great network, almost the entire length of the Wasatch Front, but there is an awkward gap right there where I live in Springville. There's trails to the south, there's trails to the north, but there's not really anything good except a few little pieces here and there that were small enough I didn't even bother putting them on this map. If you're going from Springville to Provo, you have a few options. You can go up Ironton Road past the gravel pit and all the big trucks. There's high speeds. There's about, you know, I think it's signed for 50 miles an hour, which means people are going 60, of course. Um, it's not pleasant. You're going uphill both ways. Or you can go along Mountain Springs Parkway. It's like an industrial, you get lost in, in the maze of warehouses. Or you can take Cooney Road, which is, it's not bad, but there's no shoulder. It's only not bad because right now there's not a whole lot of traffic, but obviously there's a lot of growth coming to Springville and Provo, and it's only going to get worse. So enter the Spring Creek Trail. This is my proposal for a connection between Springville and Provo that will keep you mostly off the street, away from cars, pass through some natural, beautiful areas, and be a little bit more direct and easy to, to find. Um, also, also, I'll add that that, that left one, Cooney Road, it kind of spits you out on the the other side of, of Provo, kind of the west half of Provo. So I think this trail will be really great for getting you to those, some of those eastern destinations like BYU and, and that such. So um, also I'll point out, I have these, these blue lines coming off. So uh, this is our 400 West Bicycle Boulevard in Springville. It's on our new active transportation plan. This one's our 200 East Bicycle Boulevard and the 400 East Bicycle Boulevard. So these are all on the active transportation um, plan that is uh, not quite passed yet. It's, it's We're doing a few final tweaks before the city council passes it. And this Spring Creek Trail is also on that active transportation plan. Um, oh, and I should also add, I didn't know this until I talked to Aaron recently, but it's also on the Southeast Provo's, Provo's Southeast Neighborhood Area Plan. There is this trail. I think both of these cities have these plans on their maps. But maybe haven't talked to each other to find out, like, oh, these actually link up and we could create an interesting route. So I'm going to kind of take you step by step through this trail so you guys can kind of picture it in your minds um, and maybe even go on a ride if you'd like. So that's the transit station there. I wish I brought myself uh, a laser pointer. Um, transit station, you've got University Avenue, you have the 300 West Bicycle Boulevard, 100 West Bicycle Boulevard, 200 East Bicycle Boulevard. Um, Sorry, I'll try to be your cursor. I can okay. be your arrow. Perfect. And then you can see there's the, the cemetery there. Um, so it kind of it starts by the next to the cemetery, and I'll kind of walk you through this line here. We've got some great photos that Aaron snapped for us recently. If they'll load. So this is you're at the cemetery looking south. There's a little driveway here that leads to that gravel road. You take that gravel road. Um, it's a really beautiful ride. A, this is this is the Achilles heel of this uh, whole proposal. Some of this is Union Pacific land, which I know is Union Pacific is very difficult to work with. Um, but there's ways I think that we could uh, skirt around some of the edges of it because Provo owns a lot of these pieces. But this first section is probably the most difficult section that we might do. Uh, this sign, I don't. You snap the photo of this. Yeah. So alongside this gravel road, in the next picture, there's a better shot of it. 
there's a little bit of a, a drainage ditch, which I think Provo City owns. It's yeah. a drainage outfall, and that's what that sign that's is. By the photo of that yeah. sign. Um, and so this gravel road that I enjoy riding on, it um, that might be owned by Union Pacific, and maybe they wouldn't be very friendly to work with, I'm not sure. But Provo owns the piece right next to it. Um, and parts of that drainage ditch are um, Hi. Yes, well, well, there's a photo of that as well. Um, there's a lot of new housing going up along State Street back down there. This trail would connect with people directly to not just the rest of the city, but to the transit station. So we could get, uh, you know, provide that regional link that uh, people like MAG are often looking for. Um, anytime I ride this trail, the, the railroad workers just smile and wave. They've never given me any trouble. I see people down there riding and driving all the time. Um, there's another shot of that drainage ditch, similar to the other housing towers going up. Um, this shot shows that right alongside some of these towers, of course, Provo has built a street for these these homes, and they're covering over that drainage ditch with a culvert. So you could put, I don't know what Provo's plans are, but that Southeast Neighborhood Plan does show a trail along this corridor next to the railroad tracks. Um, it's a pretty nice ride in the summertime in the evenings because you get there at the boxcars, cast a nice shadow. So if you want to go down there and get a ride, it's pretty great. Uh, there's some of my family, they we use it pretty often. Uh, this is a photo of a, a trail in Madison, Wisconsin. Aaron recently went there. And there, I guess they're pretty good at doing rails with trails, is what they call it. Like we do rails to trails here, but this is where rails with trails where they squeeze the trail directly next to an active rail corridor. Um, and it's not such a foreign concept either. We have the same thing here in Utah. Our UTA representative might be familiar with this S-Line Trail, which is directly next to a very, very busy um, route in Sugar House. And so you, if, if Union Pacific is willing to play, I think it would be a, a great trail that works for them and for Provo and Springfield. Um, so now we'll we're past some of the, the trickiest parts. It does continue along the railroad tracks, but some of these pieces are owned not by Union Pacific, but rather by a different <laughs> private land. Um, it's, like I said, it's, it's quite pleasant and beautiful to ride along through here. Um, it goes underneath the viaduct. This is, what's this one? 1860 South, I think, is that what it is? Um, and then, oh, of note, these railroad tracks, I'm not certain. But right along here, that face of the, that gravel road is what used to be the Orem Interurban Railroad. Um, some of the old timers remember riding on that one way back in the day that connected all the cities that were electric trains. So there's there's a lot of cool history along this route too. This and one question: Should a place where they're developing and putting in some housing or apartments? Yeah. In Provo, a couple places where they're doing that, we we talked to the developers; they put in. I would love for that to happen. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's something that you guys are in charge of, like creating easements as things go in, but it is something that should be on our radar probably so that we can get some easy wins rather than having to come back and squeeze it into existing infrastructure. But so whenever there's a development happening, I mean there are some infrastructures that we require the developer to develop such as the yeah. pipe needs to be outside or the okay, utility needs to be um, installed, sidewalk, half of the road, uh pipe spread, vegetation, things of that nature. Uh, but that only goes into the development agreement. So I'm not sure what the development agreement for that development is. Uh, two ways to make them do anything because they're developing a new level of pain and turn down the fire to the next section. So we need to get in earlier before there's other agreement. Um, but I don't understand that we require them to make improvements yeah. as part of our site. Um, anything beyond that, for example, if it's a big development and it's a time in our roads, uh, and we're often to make improvements on that or could be. Maybe from a one lane to two lane, vice versa, maybe make improvements along, put a signal there, things like that. It just depends on what exactly the development is and how 
it will change the far away of the universe, how it will change that bacteria. Yeah, uh, it might be too late for some of those that we saw in the photos, but there's probably certainly more development in that area to come. So we could maybe make that happen. I know Spanish Fork has been doing kind of the same thing, and that's how they've gotten a lot of their trios recently. Um, and, and like I said, it might just be that like it's on the plan, but it's not really on the radar because it seems like those trails don't connect to as many things. But I'm hoping that with intercity cooperation, we could maybe make some of this happen. So we, we hop off this gravel road here onto Tracy Hall Parkway, which is um, it's just an industrial road through kind of some light industrial areas. Uh, it's pretty wide because, of course, trucks sometimes need to maneuver here, but it's not very heavily trafficked. So I'm imagining along here something that might be like a, an on-street something or other painted or, or whatever would be easiest to, to implement through this section. Um, this is just more just kind of showing how much space there is to work with. I don't know where the property line for Union Pacific is on that side, but there may be enough space for you know, a wide sidewalk or something of that nature. Um, it, the, the road itself doesn't go all the way through yet. It's just a gravel path through here. Uh, but of course, it is going to go through as things develop and, and you require developers to put in more of that infrastructure. Um, so it's it's plenty rideable. It's a little bumpy. You don't want to be on your road bike tires. But, and then it picks up on the other side and you just keep riding along Tracy Hall Parkway. Um, so this is where we're at. Um, this is 1400 North in Springville. Out to the, this side is the Flying J gas station. Uh, over here is McDonald's. Um, so there's a few ways we could go here. So we this is coming down Tracy Hall Parkway. There's a new road you guys are building that goes over to this way and then uh, hits a T on 1400 North. Um, UDOT has plans. I don't remember which phase it is in their in transplant, but the UDOT has plans to rebuild 1400 North. Uh, probably expanding it, but part of those plans include a trail going east and west along that road. So this trail would connect with that and provide more of that regional connection. It may also mean that when they rebuild it, we could have the opportunity. So I think what's easiest right now is to take the trail across the 14th and North right there where you guys have just built a new road. Um, there's, I think there's plans for a signal there. Uh, that, that'd be the easiest crossing for now. If they rebuild that viaduct over the creek and over the railroad tracks, it's possible we could get a crossing that sticks closer to the actual spring creek uh, because it's really beautiful kind of natural area in there. So let's see. So this is along the new road off to the right hand side, some of that natural spring creek area that's not going to really be developable. Um, this is the, it's, you can see it hasn't even been fully paved yet. We'll take a turn right, um, and then it T-bones there with, with 1400 North in Springville. Um, let me show you this map again real quick, but go for the T-bones into 1400 North. <clears throat> but you can see that it's a little slower. But this is some of the beautiful natural Spring Creek areas that we could, we could wrap the trail through someday in the future with UDOM's cooperation. Um, <clears throat> for now, though, it will cross 1400 North right there at the very top. You see there's those storage units, uh, make a note of those, and it'll it'll follow the route of the Spring Creek through Springville. So this is what it looks like a little bit here. So these are the storage units off to your left. Um, it's it's a, it's kind of overgrown right now, but you can hear the water off to your right. Um, if you tromp through into those trees, you can see the, the creek running through there. Um, somebody comes through occasionally and clear cuts a lot of this stuff. I think it's because the Columbia Steel plant, they, they need the water. They use some of that, the Spring Creek water, so they have to access a water gate there. I'll show you. As you see, it's totally overgrown sections of it, but it's really fun to ride through. Um, here's an image. Yep. Is this a designated camping area? That can be, you know, like right now, it's definitely not. In fact, let me go back a couple slides. Um, <laughs> So as soon as it loads, sorry, the internet connection is not super great. Okay, so um, see right there where the Spring Creek kind of forks off up on the left hand top side. A lot of that is owned by the Department of Natural Resources. So see this this pond down here is it's called the Mill Pond. It provides water for the fish hatchery, 
So they're really protective of that water right there. Um, and but that means they own they own all that chunk on this side of the road and then all that chunk on that side of the road. So if we have cooperation, like intercity cooperation, mag cooperation, it's kind of nice because there's only one big landowner right there that we have to work with. Um, whether or not there would be an opportunity to add designated camping, I'm not sure. There's not a whole lot of space in there to work with. It'd be cool to do like specifically bike camping maybe, but yeah, usually when homeless or you know, what, what about you? Well, the Senate is clear for state or local funding to come to yeah. things like that. I think that's yeah, so I that'd be cool. It's not something that I thought of, so that's a good idea if it's if there's space for it. Um, let's see. It's thinking of um, here's kind of the where the, you can see the water, there's the trail to the left. Um, across the other side of this this barbed wire fence, sorry I didn't take a photo of it. Um WW Clyde owns a big chunk of land here that they're talking about redeveloping sometime in the next couple of decades. Uh, so there's opportunity for you know trail-oriented development or some kind of um, major workforce location there that we want to connect people with. Uh, this is the sort of stuff you're running through, really beautiful. There's another shot kind of looking toward this is the WW Clyde building off on the right hand side. Um, so that will be redeveloped at some point. It could be housing or offices, I'm not really sure. They don't really know here. Um, and this is the Spring Creek itself. So this one's taken on a bridge. There's a bridge across the Spring Creek. The trail would continue on that right hand bank. Um, if you go to the left on this bridge, uh, there is a neighborhood in Springville on. Sorry, I should have had a map right here, but there's a neighborhood anyway. They connect with that, that west half of Springville. So you connect with the east half and the west half of Springville, kind of a nice swing in there. Um, this is looking toward Springville's Main Street, Highway 89 State Street. Um, this is all, again all DNR land. That's the DNR offices right here. This is just kind of like a drainage pond they were about to build. Um, so it's kind of unused land. They just have, you can see they've just got some grass that they move. Um, so this is looking east towards Springville Main Street. So the, the trail would come out through that DNR land and hit Main Street here. There's a park across the street. The trail would continue south along the sidewalk here. We basically just widen the sidewalk. It would go for about a block and a half. Um, and we try to take photos of the sidewalk. You, you all know where the sidewalk on the side of Utah Street is, right? Um, the reason it goes go along the sidewalk is it'll hit a, a signal at 900 North. It just got added last year. Um, and that'll be a nice, easy, safe crossing to get people to cross Main Street. Uh, this is directly on the other side of that crossing. There's some, some apartments. Um, back here where the, you can see the dumpsters right there. Just on the other side of that is that mill pond that I told you about where the hatchery gets all of their water. So just to orient you, um, so the crossing is just off the edge of the, the screen up on the top left there. And then that open natural space is the mill pond. Uh, so the trail would go along the very edge of that mill pond. Like I said, uh, DNR, BWR, they are very protective of that water, but I think designed properly, we could make that trail so that it doesn't create any bad runoff that might get into the water. And, and I, I, I think that's possible. I see, I've seen them like driving trucks through there sometimes. So I don't know how protected they actually are or if they just stay there. I don't know. But um, you can see there's the 200 East Bicycle Boulevard, the 400 East. Um, this is on Max Plans, the 400 East. And this is on Springville's Active Transportation Plan. These green ones, that's the Spring Creek Park there. Um, in, the, in the housing in Southeast Provo that I showed you, there's a Spring Creek Park that you guys just built. So it'd be, it would connect two Spring Creek Parks that are, this one's one of the more popular ones in Springville. Um, there's a park here and this one's a little bit back there. And that would be kind of the southern terminus of this particular trail. I'll show you some photos. This is looking at the mill pond, it's more of that natural kind of, you could do boardwalks or whatever works best for BWR to protect the water. Um, it would just kind of run, so it would go through, it would go through the mill pond area and then would hop on the street for a ways, like some type of on-street facility or a wide sidewalk. 
across the road there. And then there's a wild little, it's it's really just a drainage area, but it kind of feels wild and natural. And um, here in Springville, we've talked about adding some boardwalks to really kind of activate that, that space and incorporate it into the park. And that would be kind of where it ends. So here's an overview of the entire trail. Let's see. Seems it goes. Okay, so you can see it's a pretty nice, straight, fantastic path. Uh, I recommend you try riding it. I'll give you a tour sometime if you want. Um, these are some of the engines that we have to work with. It's kind of nice that there are just a few big, large landowners that we need to work with for big chunks of it. Um, I've, I've met with MAG a couple of uh, some MAG representatives, and they've talked about how it, it seems like a good idea because it provides those regional connections. Um, on, on the north end, that 200 East Bicycle Boulevard and 300 West Bicycle Boulevard, they connect you straight to Provo Trail and the whole rest of the Golden Spoke. On the south end, Springville's 200 East Bicycle Boulevard will connect you with, we have some good bike lanes that run and connect you with the Hollow Creek Canyon Trail and the, um, the Mapleton Lateral Canal Trail and, and all that stuff. So that means that the, the map would then look like this. So there's still a little bit of a gap that needs closing, but you can see it's a lot better than, than that awkward gap we saw here in the center. Any questions or anything? Yeah. Where does this stand in terms of what we will do with that? Who are we engaging? Um, I have tried reaching out to someone at DWR who I was told would, but I haven't heard back. So I need to pester that person again and see if, if they just missed my email or something. Um, like I said, I, I met with Mag. Mag had a recent uh, grant funding workshop. And Shauna Meekum, who you guys all probably know, she says that it's probably best to start with a study rather than investing a lot of money. So what they call it, uh, is it tag? I don't know, they have, they have some particular, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Um, so they have a particular grant that they that we can tap into this, I think she said September is when we need to kind of be looking at this. Um, and I'm glad that, that some of you guys are here tonight so that you can have it on your radar as well. But I think that's where we'd start. Unless is there's anyone else that you know of? Or? And then we reached out, as Kayon probably knows, we reached out to uh, parks and to public works. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gordon uh, Hayden, who's the city engineer, is taking the lead on on this. And we're going to give him an on-site uh, tour along with Holly Byrne and Doug Robbins and Carlos. So we're engaging with Provo. You've also engaged. Yes, with I've, I've taken a few. Like I took a city council member last night for this to talk about the idea. I gave a presentation to Springville's Parks, Arts, and Recreation Board, and they really liked the idea. And there were a couple city council members that night too. So, and the community development director, uh, Jock Yost, who some of you might know, he he's on board with this idea. So there's there's the beginning of, of some momentum. And I think this is the perfect time to push this because not only is it a great idea, but there's now state funding uh, available yes. for this. And um, it, it's, from my perspective, it's a no brainer. I grew up in, in Springville and uh, then and even now, riding between these two cities uh, it seems really daunting. But when uh, Logan took, uh, me on this ride for the first time, I was like, wow, these two cities are really close. And then I ran this on Tuesday morning and um, I'm not a fast runner, but it felt like a, a very pleasant, fairly fast ride. And I was pausing and taking these photos. And I thought this, this, this would be such a wonderful recreational amenity, but also a great transportation link uh, as well, and which, is, which is why I think Gordon uh, and public works are taking the lead rather than uh, parks. You know? Yes, and I imagine it might be similar in Springville too. So Springville, you know, Provo has a great river trail. Spanish Fork has a great river trail. Springville doesn't have that. Um, we don't have any kind of river trail connection. And I think there's a lot of desire for that in Springville. So it may be that it ends up being a parks project rather than like a transportation project. But 
There's a reflector strip, there's reflector strips, there's uh, spot bracelets, and there's planters. So if you want one of those, you would be go. Uh, how should we do our grand prize? Dakota, do you have any recommendations on the grand prize? Okay, if you, okay, here's what we'll do. If you got a bingo and you want to enter yourself to win the grand prize of an 8 to 14 year old helmet, put your name on your bingo card and then hand it in and I'll draw one of those. Okay. Um, there's oh. pencil there, Harv. Oh, yes, we have a couple other people who walked in who I'm going to make an out or introduce themselves. So I say you come in. We had everyone introduce us at the beginning. Hi, I'm Barbie Osori Bisato. I am um, newly appointed to the planning commission in Um, like two weeks ago, so I'm brand new. And I'm very much into the walkability and accessibility and I'm super supportive of this. So um, I live in Grand View. And if you have anything to say to me, I'm glad to take you to the planning commission. I wrote last night. It was so much fun. I was riding my so And we're going to talk to the next two weeks. Step up. Yeah. Thanks a lot. This is Jordan Hawks. I'm Annie Hawks. Clark from Remy Hawks. And we're just like what Provo Stockers. <laughs> Be, uh, Very involved. Uh, anyone else have an entry for the grand prize? Eight to fourteen year old helmet. Uh, oh, no, we have one of the smaller small than an extra large size. Okay. Yeah. Just kind of. Let's see if it fits my head. 
Um, I'm James Fawson, um, and yeah, I'm just I on the committee to help with fire crafts, but I didn't actually do anything yet. Oh, you did. And I plan to all sign up for a bag pedal and stuff. That's me. That'll be. Okay. 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 Okay, Aaron, 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 Aaron,